Man, thank y'all for tuning in. Currently, man, your Milwaukee Bucks are sitting at 9-0. and uh, Last two victories over Minnesota Timberwolves and uh, Oklahoma City Thunder. Um, first, I'm going to break down uh, my viewpoints on the victory against the Timberwolves. Now, in my previous video, man, uh, I called it. I thought this would be uh, more of a challenge, man, with um, Gobert and, and Carl Anthony Towns. But as that game proved, man, this the, the duo of uh, Giannis and Brook Lopez in the front court is, is going to give these other team fits, man. I, I think it's impossible for um, opposing teams to handle these guys, man. And uh, I made a tweet out, man. Um, follow me on Twitter, man. Uh, Just Boys, J U S B O Y Z. Um, and this tweet, man, I, I, I had to basically um, come up with a. My, my my actual standpoint and my viewpoint on the development of Giannis and um, basically with Giannis is somebody who can rebound and play post defense like Gobert but he can drive and Euro like Cat but he still can play playmate for his other teammates like LeBron James so when you take all three of those skill sets and you combine them into one person that is working on their jump shot that's working on um their post moves like something that gobert gets criticized for because a lot of team or a lot of uh, analysts a lot of pros they think um he doesn't have a legit post moves and it showed in that game it, it he depends on his size he's he's going to seal off defenders um try to get positioning and um, wait for a ball to be passed into the paint and hopefully he goes straight up with it but you know I'm not knocking him for that but it's just like Giannis is the Giannis is the other person Giannis is the one that's going to put the work in he's going to develop his post game and he's going to show y'all that he cares about being the greatest because everything that they consider something he can do or whatever, the, whatever checklist they add and say oh Giannis needs to add this to his game he adds it his three-point jumper right now is the most fluid his, it's ever been since his rookie year. Like I'm the one, I'm the one that um, agree, I don't, I'm not sure how other people feel, but me, I feel like Giannis in his rookie year, his form and his three-point shot was okay. It was. Um, I feel like every other year since then, it's been looking worse, except for this year. I think this year he's back to. Um, putting out a more comfortable release a more comfortable jump shot and it's showing man he's he's confident in it and um i think the more he he continues to shoot this way i think eventually he can get a, a rise in his three-point percentage um but as far as this this game against the timberwolves man um holiday man drew holiday right now he's a beast he's um he's aggressive he's looking for a shot and he's not settling for uh, jumpers, three-point shots. He's using his his God-given uh, strength. Like this, like Holiday is really like a Zion point guard. He's built like Zion, but in a point guard body. Like he's strong. He's his his foundation, his legs, his thighs is very strong. And having that body, um, ability, having that body size along with the ability to dribble and create for other teammates, man, is. It's it's a it's a crazy skill set, man. And being him being able to combine that with um, the ability to be aggressive uh, going to the cup to get easy layups, it shows you that um, he he doesn't want he doesn't want this team to uh, lack offensive scoring because uh, Chris Middleton is, is out with his injury. So I think, man, just as long as, as he continues to be more, more and more energized and continue looking for for easier shots, I think you're going to see him uh, continue to put out these scoring points. Now, um, as far as this this game against Minnesota, the reason why I thought it was going to be a challenge was because the I felt like the Timberwolves can score um, with D'Lo. Uh, Andrew Edwards or Anthony Edwards I felt like they had enough on the outside to uh, create shots but their with, with, that, with the, their downfall compared to um, 
Milwaukee, their deep, their uh, their bench just isn't as aggressive. Now, when you look at Milwaukee's bench, man, it doesn't matter who started. I feel like um, Wesley Matthews, uh, Nora, uh, Mochamp, uh, it's 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 crazy, man. George Hill, Grayson Allen, the depth in this bench is what pushes this team above the competition, along with uh, the defense and the ball movement. This team, everyone everyone is shooting. Everyone can shoot. Um, it may not be above average, above average, but everyone is confident enough to let each other shoot. They believe, hey, man, try it again. Like, Brooke Lopez missed the three. They got the offensive rebound, kicked it right back to him, straight in. Like, let me, let me speak on this. The, the ability for Brooke Lopez to complete, completely change his game. When he came into the league, he was, he was like, uh, what's the guy's name, man? I, this is crazy because he went to my, uh, my favorite college basketball team, uh, Duke Blue Devils. Uh, I'm just drawing a blank. He ended up going to the Sixers. And um, they, like, the play style just pushed him out the league. He just, he wasn't um, he wasn't one that can shoot threes or stretch the floor, create his own shot or dribble, and that's something that Brooke Lopez adapted completely. Like he was not that guy. He wasn't the guy that was going to um, put the ball on the floor and get to the cup. And he wasn't the guy that was going to shoot the three. He was more of a post dude. Like uh, Brooke always had post game though. It wasn't like he was like Gobert when he's just going to try to seal off and get position and, and then uh, wait for an open pass. Like Brooke can he can he can score, but so he's a, he he kept that and then he added the three point shooting and the ball handling, the ability to drive and go and get his own basket. That right there put Milwaukee in a whole nother league because now he's not he's not the one that is reliant on uh, other players he can go and get his bucket and he can set up other players as well so that that the ability for him to get better is what is making Milwaukee a powerhouse right now earlier in the season if you remember last year he missed like 80 90 percent of the season so I think even though we're uh, without uh, Chris Middleton, I think having a healthy Brook Lopez, along with the defense, the ball handling, and Giannis, that is what is putting us in a situation where we're impossible to beat right now. Right now. But um, that's just how I feel about that game. And I think going forward, man, you're going to see more of a... Um, you're going to see more, more of the same. It's going to be more consistent. And I think with the live by the three, die by the three, I think... Um, I think they're going to put their self on, on uh, they're going to put pressure on, on, on the defensive end to create more offensive shots and they're going to rebound the hell out of the ball. They're going to rebound and play great defense which is going to allow them to get more opportunities on the offensive end. Now I'm going to move forward to the Thunder game. As far as with the uh, OKC Thunder, Giannis didn't play this game. And uh, I was I was I was a little bit more lenient in um, maybe a trap game since Giannis wasn't playing. This game was never close. Like for the most part, um, in the first quarter, the uh, the Bucks let them pretty much do whatever they wanted to do. Uh, their their defense wasn't pretty much aggressive. It wasn't as physical as it proved to be later on in the game. So the first quarter, man, I was a little nervous. They put up 30, what, 32 points in the first quarter. I didn't like that. But as the game wore on, we got um, basically got back to our fundamentals, played excellent defense, and we had uh, probably one of the best offensive rebounding games of the season. And I think that that would put us more uh, aggressive with the, from three point from uh, three point line, from the three point line. And then after that, you pretty much seen um, those guys just give up. Um, they had a lot of turnovers, and I think that w- that put us, man, in a situation where once we start getting turnovers and hitting threes, this team is impossible to beat, man. And um, it started off; it didn't start off like that. But without Giannis, man, we believe I think we had what seven players in double figures. 
Uh, I think what Brooke Lopez may have led in the score, led us in scoring. Let me just double check. Yeah, so Brooke Lopez had 25 points. He only had three rebounds. And you know why? Because Bobby Portis had 21. <laughs> so, um, man, this this team is special. It's very deep, and everyone has a role. It's not like um, everyone's just out there just trying to do. No, no, they know what their job is, and their job is going to be that player's main focus throughout the game. So, even though he had 21 rebounds, um, Bobby Portis, he finished two for five from three, totaling 12 points. Lopez finished with 25. And Drew Holiday only had 10 points this game. But he had 13 assists and six rebounds. JV, Javon Carter. Now, man, listen. This is probably the best I've ever seen him play in uh, a Milwaukee uniform. From three, he hit five threes, five for nine. He was pesky on the defense end. He, this was this was probably his most complete game, man. And I, I don't think this was like a one hit wonder. Like this is what we wanted when we brought him in from Brooklyn. We knew what he was capable of, and I think now he's fully blossomed into um, whether he's going to be a starting two guard until something happens with Middleton, or he might be the sixth man off the bench, but I think just having him um, in this mode right now, excuse me, I think it puts him, I think it puts this team in a position where you can possibly see Chris Middleton come off the bench and and have him be that um, electric spark that this team, that the team needs. Imagine just adding Chris Middleton's skill level to the bench. Like that puts us even more, um, in a more dangerous slot, man, and I think that's due to the the the, the, uh, the play of J- uh, Javon Carter, man. Um, Grayson Allen, yeah, I told y'all he had 19 points. That's my, I think that's the season high. So as you seen Giannis not play, man, you did the the uh, the scoring. It was more spread out, but it wasn't like it was a different game plan. Like even though we, even though this team didn't play with Giannis, they still played the same. They still moved the ball. They still got the ball to the open man. And they still um, crashed the boards and tried to get as much rebounds as possible. And a lot of those rebounds was offensive rebounds. And they allowed, they were allowed to go back up with the ball. Sometimes they missed it, but just allowing, allowing the the opportunity to have the ball is what made this, team, made this um, game get out of hand. Like, I believe they finished the final score. They may have been about, like, 10-plus, but it was times where this game was above 20. And that's without Giannis. And that and that team is healthy compared to Chad Holmgren. But, um, hey, they ain't have, we ain't have Giannis, man, and it still looked very clean. It was efficient. The defense was still there, and they didn't let up on the offensive end as far as the rebounding and on the, uh, on the uh, defensive rebounding side. So I think, man – um, this, like I was saying, like I'm saying on Twitter, man, this is a testament to the coaches. The coaches, man, they get, they're getting these guys more shots because Milwaukee is a team that can play both paces. They can they can take it slow or they can have the up uh, the up tempo. And I think, man, these te- it's like when you can get beat so many different ways, a team can find ways to beat you if they're equipped to beat you in multiple ways. If this if it's gonna be a defensive game, we can do that. If it's gonna be a high scoring shootout, we can do that. If it's gonna be slow paced, Drew bringing the ball up, Giannis bringing the ball up, running plays, uh, creating sets, and then um, using ball movement to get an easy shot. Or if it's just gonna be ISO, they have ISO. They have players who can ISO get their own shot and create for their teammates. Or they got the, and they got the uh, fast pace. Where as soon as they get the rebound, if it's Bobby Porter, he can push the ball. Giannis can get the rebound. He can push the ball. Drew Holiday, he can push the ball. Like this is the, this one man fast break is a whole other element. And then it's it's when you can create for yourself and for your teammates, and then you can have six or seven different play styles. This team is dangerous, y'all. I'm telling y'all, this isn't a mistake. This isn't like you know how some every year it's always it's always those one or two teams that are just 
undefeated, blah, blah, blah. Then they tail off. They start off 7-2, and two, and then they don't make the playoffs. Like, we all know that Milwaukee's going to make the playoffs. We all know how special they are. But they're not – they were never this complete this early on in the season. And I think this is a testament to the coaches, man. Coach Bud is not playing. He's he's creating opportunities, man. And he's right now, he's the coach of the year. And it's not even about the record. It's about – how he took Milwaukee and elevated them to a new platform, man. Thank y'all for tuning in. Y'all have a good one. Peace.